Now, which of these, so there are no really good nucleophiles here. Who's more nucleophilic, the oxygen or the nitrogen? Uh, let's see, I don't know, I, I'd have to look that up, basically. The oxygen is more nucleophilic than a carbonyl oxygen normally is, but it still has a resonance structure where it's neutral, so it's not that great a nucleophile either. So for most problems, we're simply gonna say there are no good nucleophiles in an amide. There's no good nucleophiles in an amide. The key point of this resonance structure is not to focus on the negative charge on the oxygen, but the positive charge on the nitrogen, which is making this into a poor nucleophile. The key thing is, we might have expected this to be nucleophilic and basic because it's got a nitrogen. Now, this is the reason why there's a dash in the side chain column for asparagine. The reason there's a dash is because it has an amide group here, so we should not try protonating this nitrogen. We should not try protonating it because we just learned amide nitrogens are not basic. So we can, those side chains don't only refer to their acidic qualities, they also refer to basic qualities. So whether they can lose hydrogen right. or... Because like in the previous example where we saw right. OH, we were mostly concerned with the hydrogen leaving. That's right. We're concerned with it being protonated. The side chain column is going to tell us both whether there's an acidic or whether there's a basic side chain. That's right. We'll see that more clearly when we get to our first basic side chain. That's a little bit complicated. But in a second, we'll get to that. Or actually, I guess we can kind of see it right off the bat. If you take a look at that column for the, for the side chain, notice that in that column for the side chain, most of the entries are dashes. And that means there's no acidic or basic side chain. And then some of the entries are numbers. But some of the numbers have little seeds next to them. And some of the numbers don't have little seeds next to them. Well. If there is a little c, that means that there's a basic side chain. Mm -hmm. A little c means a basic side chain, and no little c means an acidic side chain. Right, he was trying to show that with Hasselbach equation mm -hmm. with somebody in office hours. I don't know if we should equate that or if we should. Let's see. Uh, yeah, we might be able to go through that. That's probably not the best use of our time right, right. now. We've got okay. a lot of stuff to That's go over. But it's very important to realize then that there's three different pieces of information we could get from that column about the side chains. If there's a dash, then the side chain is neither acidic nor basic. If there's a number with a little c next to it, that means you have a basic side chain. And if there's a number with no little c, that means you have an acidic side chain. So going back to asparagine, there's a dash, which means that this is neither acidic nor basic. We might have thought it might have been basic because it has a nitrogen. But now we wouldn't think that because we know it's an amide nitrogen. So even without the table, we would have known this is not basic. Going back to tyrosine, does the table tell us that tyrosine has an acidic or a basic side chain? Acidic, we already were using that as we went along. That's actually important, right? Because a naive person might easily think that that oxygen should gain a proton. What about tyrosine? Yeah. If you go back to the, ty the, ty the tyrosine, mm -hmm. does that side chain tend to lose a proton or gain a proton? Lose. Lose. That's why there's no little c in the column there. But that, that's an interesting because, you know, actually sometimes oxygens do gain protons. So it's important to be able to tell from the table that the tyrosine oxygen doesn't want to gain a proton, it wants to lose a proton. That's something you might not have been able to, to, that might not have been obvious without looking at the tape. That's all I have to say about asparagine. So far, so good. All right. So let's take a look at glutamine. Notice that glutamine is exactly the same as asparagine, except one more carbon in the side chain. So now we have glutamine one more carbon in the side chain. What type of functional group is this? Another amid. Just to clarify for my mind, in terms of drawing it again, so that it fills an octet, that carbon, the beta carbon, so connected to two hydrogens, correct? Then a CH2, and then also that carbon, the... Right. So that's, okay. You just drew it again, that bond way, right? Just to make it fast. I'm not following you. You drew it just to make it quickly. Like, that's not literally the connection. The carbonyl carbon would be connected to the beta, correct? Oh, so we, I'm sorry. We're done with asparagine. Now we're looking at glutamine. Have oh, you looked yeah. at glutamine in yeah, your table? Yeah, I just turned here. I'll draw it. Have you looked at glutamine in your yeah. table? Yeah. Notice that glutamine has three carbons on the side chain. Right, but I'm saying okay. so it looks like this, right, in terms of the real. So I think this is a natural way to draw the side chain for glutamine. Again, it's exactly like asparagine, we've just added an extra CH2 group. It's like asparagine, but we've added an extra CH2 group. So here's the beta CH2, 
And then following along the table, there's another CH2 group and then the AMI functionality. Here we have an AMI. So from our outside knowledge, we would not expect this to be basic, even though it's got a nitrogen. And as that confirmed in the table, there's a dash in the side chain columns. So that confirms again, this is not a basic side chain. So notice, you don't want to go around protonating any nitrogen you see, only amine nitrogens. All right, moving on to lysine. Let's try drawing the side chain for lysine. Some nitrogens tend to gain protons and some don't. We need to use the table to figure out which nitrogens might protonate. We can't just assume that all the nitrogens would protonate at low pH. We just saw some nitrogens are, are basic and some are not. That's right. Well, careful. Not too careful. That's right. Okay, good. The subscript A is not going to be too important to us, but if you look at the bottom, the things with the subscript A are the essential amino acids. That's a nutritional fact. Remember, the essential amino acids are the amino acids that your body can't synthesize, so those need to be present in your diet. If someone, ha if someone is not eating food with all the essential amino acids, uh, there will be negative health consequences. Anything that is not an essential amino acid can be synthesized from other things. Can we give some examples of this one? With lysine? Okay. Well, first of all, as everyone agreed, this would be a good structure for lysine. Now, uh, I haven't worried about the protonation here yet, but this is the right number of carbons. So notice that in the table, they drew it like this. But this is just shorthand for four carbons in a row. In the table, they drew it like this. But this is just shorthand for four carbons in a row and then a nitrogen at the end. So how many carbons are there on our side chain? Four. But there's still a CH2 group at the beta carbon. Suppose we have a very low pH. What would be the correct form here? So does this, is this side chain acidic or basic? basic? Basic. So at a very low pH, this should pick up a proton. What type of functional group is this? An amine. It's instructed to compare lysine with glutamine and asparagine. Asparagine, glutamine, and lysine, they all have nitrogens in their side chains. But only lysine has a basic side chain, because only lysine has an amine in the side chain. Asparagine and glutamine have amides, amides, and amides in the side chain. So actually, it seems like glutamine is maybe not a very good name for glutamine because it's not really an amine. It would be better to call it glutamide, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Glutamine really should have been called glutamide, I suppose. But here we have lysine. Wait, why? Why should glutamine be called glutamide? Uh, because glutamine doesn't have an amine group on the side chain. It has an amide group. So I was just making a criticism of the organic chemist that chose that name. It seems that it, like it would be more logical to have called glutamine glutamide. Does asparagine have also an NH2 connected to the carbonyl oxygen? Right. So yeah, we talked about asparagine a, a couple minutes ago. So does asparagine have an amine group or an amide group? An amide. An amide. Now, there the, the name is kind of ambiguous because it doesn't have an amine or an amide in it. So I would not be as critical about that name. Oh, I see what they should have. OK. All right. Now, dealing with lysine, um, you said you wanted to do some examples. Uh, what else is there to say? So we can start changing the pH, and again, that would start changing the charges on the side chain here, and on this nitrogen and this nitrogen. Wait, it would be pretty similar to what we've seen before. pH of one? Sure. So this pH of one is lower than all the pKa's. So I've got everybody fully protonated here. Okay, and now if we start increasing the pH, we'll start deprotonating people. As, if I start increasing the pH, if I start gradually increasing the pH, which would be the first functional group to deprotonate here in lysine? TLH. That's right, because that has the pKa of 
And then if I continue raising the pH, who would be the next functional group to deprotonate? The alpha amino group, because that has the next lowest pKa of 9.0. And then I have to continue raising the pH above 10.5 to finally deprotonate the amino group on the side chain. Or below 10.5. If I wanted to deprotonate this, I'd have to raise the pH above 10.5. Mm, okay. Any other questions about lysine? That's why we're deprotonating. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just if you do it too fast in yep. your head, it's very confusing. Yeah. Yep, that's true. One thing I should mention is I, I feel that I basically understand all this material now, but when I do problems in the exam book, a lot of the time I make careless mistakes. Even after you understand this material, it's very easy to make careless mistakes. You really want to try to save yourself enough time to do these problems carefully on the exam. And also this means you should try to do these problems in the exam book multiple times so that you learn what your common careless mistakes are and learn how to avoid them.